Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing about the module 3 super important question which is regarding the mapping of the caches. There are three techniques you have to write with the diagram and what are its functions, what are the differences. So let's have a look at that. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and without wasting any more time let's get started. So um, basically you have to start with what is caching and after that we will be uh, writing the three techniques. What uh, the so the question is this one it can be asked for 10 mark question explain the cache mapping techniques okay so what is cache mapping why do we need a need a cache in the first place cache is what you know like uh, you have a memory here and you have a cache here okay why do we need cache cache is for faster purpose repeat with me cache is for faster purpose faster purpose of what memory retrieval obviously you have data something in cache and you want to access it faster instead of going to the memory and searching it and coming out very slowly you can just take the cache and take the uh, things faster that is why cache is used and to implement the cache you need to implement the mapping technique where each block will be mapped with some value index value pair okay you know right index value pair like that only we'll be using the mapping as well here so that uh, for when we access each of the index we'll be getting the specific value associated with that and the mapping can be of three types the first one is uh, the direct map techniques where you'll be having the direct mapping with the memory second one is set associative wherein you will be having some sets will, which will be associated it's the intermediate between the direct mapping and the fully associative mapping in fully associative mapping you'll not be having any sets or not the direct mapping you'll be having an associative type of mapping which will be seeing in the upcoming topic let's have a look at each one by one first is direct mapping caches in direct mapping caches there is a data block i uh, which is mapped to the data block j from the memory okay that's the first key point you'll be writing after you have mapped that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between both of the blocks because each of these are mapped there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the blocks and uh, to find a, a memory block j you will have to use the memory block i then only you'll be able to find that okay where i is stored Furthermore, information like for example if you have 2 power n words in the main memory and 2 power k words in the cache how do you map it uh, is by uh, dividing the whole stuff into two parts the first part is of the n bits is consisting of three fields low order uh, k bits are referred as index field remaining n minus k see n are there the first n are uh, used to refer as low order bits and the remaining n minus k which is the remaining ones are uh, referred to as high order bits also called as a tag by using the tag you will be accessing a specific value okay and each of the index field is further divided into a slot field what will be the slot field used for it will be used to find a particular slot in a cache in the cache a particular slot you'll be finding using a tag value and that slot is divided into small parts and the offset field is used to identify a particular memory word into the slot you'll be using offset as a shortcut to find out what the actual word is in the memory and when the block is stored in the cache its tag field is stored also you'll be having some tag field stored that's all what you need to keep in mind and this is one of the diagram which you have to make and and the same diagram will be made for the other two as well so i have not repeated this diagram the same diagram you will make just a slight difference is what you will change that i'll let you know in when i will cover the next two topics so here what you have a set and a line and a word after I've done that, draw memory here with the line 0, 1, 2 and all. So you can draw as many uh, lines you can. But remember, it will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. These are called as sets. Each of these is called one set, second set, third set and so on. And each of these blue things you can see is called as a tag. And this is the data field of the memory. What the data you are uh, storing, that is the cache memory. Like in one set, you'll be storing four caches. And for each of those four caches, you'll be having a separate tag associated with that. And this is how the order will be present. And this is the main store in which you'll be having every everything at one place okay this is the diagram you have to make and write the explanation in your own words let's move on to the next topic which is set associative mapping in set associative mapping as you saw in the previous slide in that we had the sets associated right we'll be using that sets to do the mapping let's have a look how it actually happens most computers use the set associative mapping technique as it compromises between the direct map caching and fully cached as i told you in the intro part you will be having set in between the direct and the fully associated that's your first point second point is in the set associative several direct map caches are connected in parallel direct map cache direct map cache direct map cache they are connected in what this is called as parallel connection each of these are connected parallelly and then uh, here's an example taken to find a memory block b in the uh, cache there are n entries that the b block can be and n can be uh, varying from any number from 1 to uh, any number right so if n is 2 you'll be having two two sets like 2 2 2 2 2 and to find a b block it can be in either of these two or either of these 
these two or either of these two so it reduces the uh, finding time see if you have a whole set and you divide the whole set into two parts and you know for sure that which part the answer lies in you need not select the rest part also this is how the binary search works right the same way you will be selecting the n value and after selecting the n value it can be associated with k values inside that n value means how many parts the whole data set is if you divide the parts and then each part will have k data right so that k value also you have to set here and by using the k value you'll be finding out the exact um um, thing what you have to find for example b is present at n is equal to 3 and k is equal to 4 means third block inside that there are some values and fourth value is what b okay like that by using n and k value will be forming sets and each of the k is called as one set like that many k sets are there and the total length is called n length okay that is how you will be uh, writing these things for more information go through this uh, theory information here moving on we have the full associative mapping here will not be dividing into the uh, sets but we will directly map it okay what does directly mapping mean here uh, the limitation of the direct mapping uh, is overcome because there is no restriction of what data it can contain with the associative cache mapping there is no restriction of what data it has in associative cache mapping the previous one should have a specific type of data that was a restriction and in associative memory it is the fastest and the most flexible way of cache organization because here a very uh, uh, optimized way of uh, organizing the data is present here the diagram you have to make and it stores the both the address and the value what it stores it stores the address and the value that is the third key point from the main memory in the cache direct main memory to the cache there is a, a storage and there is an n bit input which has the associated memory associated with that then what happens is the um, address process is divided into the three fields tag line and the word that's the first uh, diagram what i had uh, told right that's the only diagram you have to make in that also you saw tag line and the word tag will uh, use to find out which of uh, the data associated with that to find out that we'll be using the tag line is that what uh, line is present there and what data is uh, present inside that word is the actual information which we need to extract from the memory and the mapping is done with storing the tag information in the n bit register by the uh, tag information will be able to find out right if you don't store you'll not be able to find out and uh, comparing it with the address tag in each location simultaneously once we had stored something we have to find out we'll be searching in a list like this is equal this is equal this is equal that's the key point uh, here have the input data is matched with the tag then we'll be selecting that data otherwise associative memory produces a miss output obviously if there is no, nothing to be found it will produce a miss output right that's all make sure the like button subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one